Welcome to my parade of socks. This is the Adorn It podcast, episode 47. My name is Steph, and thanks for joining me. You can find me on Ravelry as Knitting Samurai and on Instagram as Adorn It Steph or Knitting Samurai. One's for shop, one's for knitting and family. So, how have you been? I hope you have a good cup of coffee and some socks in hand because it is my full intention to motivate you to knit all the socks. So, let's do this. <laughs> Cheers, mate. <laughs> I told you to get a coffee and some sock knitting, but I realized my coffee was almost empty. So, I am drinking eight o'clock coffee. I know, store brand. But, um, or maybe it's not store brand, I don't know. It's not fancy. It's one of those basic ones that my dad would sometimes get when I was growing up. But they have a pumpkin spice that you can get on Amazon and it's delicious. So I'm having that with uh, skinny vanilla syrup, Jordan's skinny syrup, and ice, obviously, and a little vanilla almond milk. And it's like fall in a glass at the start of summer. Okay, I'm ready. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. Finished objects, works in progress, and a shop update. And I have to make a confession. I haven't bought anything. There is nothing that has come in in the last three weeks. Oh, yes, there is. <laughs> okay, only one thing, and it was a club. So I didn't actively go out and buy it. I had previously bought it. So I uh, remind me when I get to the end. I'll show you that. So first, okay, let's get this out of the way. Splash Pad Party is hosted by the Down Cellar Studio podcast, hosted by Jen. It is a knit along that goes over the course of the summer, and it's just for fun, and you chat, and it's really laid back. Do as much or as little as you want. So previous years, I've done little. This year, for some reason, I got it in my head to be kind of competitive with everyone else. And they don't know it. It's one of those like, you know, you're you're competing, but they're not and you win and you have a little quiet celebration and they don't even know. It. So yeah, this year I decided to um, see how much I could finish and if I could get high in the rankings. And of course, my two boys, 10 and 7, no, 9 and 7, he's going to be 10 in a month. Uh, have been egging me on like, go mom, go. So every time I finish something off and I uh, yeah, finish a project, enter the details. It's a little like woohoo celebration for me. So that's assuming, of course, that nobody saved up all their stuff and then enters it and then I drop down because normally I'm in like 30th, 130th. I'm not really very close to the top. So it's fun to see where I am this year. So yeah, that has caused me that and the reorg because, you know, you go through all your whips and because they're in a cupboard, they're up in the closet and I can't reach that top shelf. We went through them and it was like, okay, this one is sooner to be dealt with. And that's more of a long-term project, put it on the top shelf. So I revisited everything. And of course that motivates you to finish things. So, um, we're going to start the parade with my current desert vested dye work sock. So this is a monthly knit along hosted by the dyer. Uh, Desert Vista Dye Works. Every month you knit a pair of her socks and I did the first six months and I'm getting a free skein. So that's really awesome. I love her uh, colorways and self-striping. She's got everything. A huge catalog. I don't even understand how she can come up with so many colors. She frankly inspires me. So um, this one is the Summer Sock Camp colorway. Um, it's connected to Kay, the crazy sock lady, her knit along that she's hosting. I just wanted the colors. I wanted the sock camp colors. I haven't really participated in that one. Uh, but yeah, so I love it. This is Kay's logo. Uh, and this is, represents the fire and hey, let me turn it that way. The fire. And I think that's like the night sky with a little white flex. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. I would not have put these colors together and I'm in love with it. Like maybe my top five Desert Vista Dye Works colorways. <laughs> and do you notice there is no teal in this sock and I still love it. The pattern is a free pattern. It is the Berkshires by Nitty Melissa. And 
it's um, pretty easy, you know, chevron, chevrons alternating with uh, garter stitch ridges. Everything is mindless to do and not completely mindless. It's like a 20% brain power and um, it's fun. It makes it a little more interesting than just the plain old rib sock that I traditionally do. And I'm really enjoying the uh, zigzaggy chevron effect. So these are definitely for me. I have Frankenstein them as I, as I do. So took her stitch pattern, not sure if she's toe up or cuff down, but I'm doing it toe up. And then, uh, Sarah Jordan has, she's a sponsor for the splash pad party. So that was why I tried this new pattern. As you know, the Wendy Johnson slip stitch heel pattern, I'm hugging my socks again, has been my go-to sock pattern for well on 10 years. You know, I put it on everything. I have it almost memorized. Do I have it memorized? You know, there's a little spot in the turn where I have to look at the numbers, but once I look at one number, then I'm good to go. You know, it's like, oh, go around and then go to this point. Okay, now I know exactly what to do from that. So really, if I would just remember that 46, I'd be all set because that's what it is. <laughs> Anyways, so I've done that one forever, but I wanted to get some points for the splash pad party. So I tried Sarah's. It's essentially the non-Euclidean heel, but she wrote it for toe up. She flipped it. Those are both her patterns. So um, I think I spent $5 for that pattern. I had, I have a note. Let me see. Yes, it was a $5 pattern by Sarah Jordan. And so uh, I think this is probably my sixth sock with it. Um, I get, I'm, I'm getting the fit right, you know, perfecting it. I really enjoy knitting it. And it reminds me a little bit of the Riverbed Socks by Kat Bordy. That's another one that back in 2007, I knit a lot of those. And then I promptly switched to Wendy. Johnson and then I forgot how to do the riverbed construction. I have the book. It's in the closet. I can pull it out and redo it, but um, I like this one. So I'm doing this one now. It's new, exciting. It counts for points. So yeah, two patterns together on this one. So first sock. Dun -dun -dun -dun. And of course it's writing with the gnomes. Doesn't match the gnomes. <laughs> so you know how last time I thought everything matched the gnomes? That one doesn't. All right, the next sock, I pulled out a UFO that is a Christmas sock. So um, Erin, who hosts, what's the name of hers? Uh, she Must Knit? She, oh God, I'm going to put it on the bottom. I can't remember. It's just Erin in my head. She has Crafty Bingo, and I have my bingo card, and maybe I'll share it. Ooh, that's a good idea. I haven't shared my bingo card in a while, and I've been making some serious progress. But one of the squares on my bingo card, I've done, let me back up, the Crafty Bingo with Erin, I have done it for, this is the third year. Every year I try to get a blackout. So it's like 25 goals. You have a free space in the middle. 24 goals that you try and achieve over the year. And she gives you a chance midway through the year to change. I was asleep at that point. I missed the chance to change. I don't really want to change. I'm fine. I'm happy with the goals I set in January. And as long as the goals aren't too specific, like knit a, a pattern, knit this particular sweater pattern, you could find a way to make them work for things you've done. So I think I'm like six or seven goals on that finished check. check, check, check. So um, it's really fun. But one of my goals is to do three pairs of Christmas socks, right? So mom's Christmas socks, Jingle All the Way, I think is what it was. It was a Felici. She burned a hole in the heel. So they got thrown away after last Christmas. I've never knit my dad Christmas socks and I've never knit Steve Christmas socks. So my thinking in January was, because we all wear end up wearing hand knits on Christmas for some reason, it's kind of, it's like a little tradition. I don't know. I think my parents wear their hand knits all the time. Steve and I definitely don't. And so it's a conscious choice for both of us. And then your feet look cute in the pictures, right? So I wanted to get everybody Christmas socks in. I'm not sure if I'll get there. I have a sock snake that I had um, carry of Freckled Whimsy crank for me. 
and I gave her one of the Christmas colorways. So if nothing else, I need, I can do two pairs of heels, toes, and cuffs, and then there'll be this one. Make sense? Okay, let's keep going. So <laughs> this pattern is by Tina Koo. She had another Frankenstein pattern here. She had a toe up heel pattern on this gorgeously cabled, very intricate sock. I can't pronounce it, so I'm gonna put it here. I think the translation is like spring ecstasy or something. I've knit this toe up construction before, and what's interesting about it is that I think it's like the flap is on the bottom and then you decrease the stitches up the leg, and so you get this interesting triangle effect up the back of the leg. So I wanted to try it, so I did it just plain ribbing. Um, it's been a while since I knit this one, to be honest. I can't really remember. But this yarn is can it nope. 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 Maybe it is. <laughs> it might be. It's on my project page. So I'll probably put it in down below now that I'm being difficult. Um, it may be a candy color from Regia, but that is the one that I had Carrie Crank. So I don't know why that tag is in that bag. But anyways, first one's down. Pulled out the second one <clears throat> and I can show you the heel a little bit better on this. So it makes for a flat bottom of the foot and then you turn the heel and can you see it goes up into a triangle towards my finger. And I thought it would look interesting with the stripes and the ribbing. So I, uh, I did that. I set it aside at that point and based on the stripe sequence, cause of course I had to make them the same. I've got one stripe repeat to go and then I'm binding off. So these have been put away since the end of the winter knitting season. And I just pulled them out and got to it. I should say, Every sock I will show you is knit on uh, size zeros, which I think is a two millimeter needle. So there is that one. The next sock, another one, this was emergency movie theater knitting that I did, I don't know, a couple falls ago, something. It wasn't last fall, that's for sure. And I was at this castle. So. I hadn't put in a heel yet, so guess what heel I put in? <laughs> so this is the CPCTC or CTCPT, whatever it is. Uh, the yarn is a nice workhorse yarn. Ah, I'm ball band deficient today. It is Manny Petty, I believe. I'm not sure if that's Lion Brand. It's one of the big box store yarns. Uh, I it's very toothy. It's great. So is um, the Regia one that I just showed you, but it's really nice. I love the colors. And this one, I am just letting the colors go around the heel as they want. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I was going to, but then the stripe re repeat was going to be off. I was going to lose the teal color. Teal? Can't lose the teal off the top of the foot. So I did do a little color management there. Cause, you know, I like my stripe sequence to maintain, which did it on that one? I don't remember. So there's that. <laughs> the next sock on the sock tour, cause I'm showing you all the boring ribs right now, but they're good to have just cause you know, you're in line at the bank, at the pharmacy, you're waiting to pick up the boys from soccer camp, whatever. It's great to have two by two rib to knit, I find. So this one, I was here, not up to the heel yet. So guess what heel I put in? So I'm working on it. I haven't finished this heel. It's, it's a heel in progress. This one, I am using, oh my God, this is hilarious. I never lose my ball bands. Hot Sock? Hang on. Oh, I believe this is called Hot Sock. Again, I'll put it on the bottom. Um, another great kind of workhorse yarn. This is the one that I reworked it from toe up. I reworked the direction I was knitting the yarn. Oh, good. 
good, good, good. I hadn't noticed. I'm starting the heel increases, right? I'm about <clears throat> a third of the way into the heel increases. And I'm just hitting, because this is a self-striping yarn, the section of dark teal for the coordinating heels, toes, and cuffs. It's one of those yarns, you know, that it's all built in and then you have the strip of yarn that's a different color that tells you when to break it and go to the next part. So yay, that's going on. I was working on these while we watched The Goonies. Have you seen that? It's on, it's available, I wanna say HBO. I loved it when I was a kid. I remember watching it with my Aunt Bonnie. Uh, I had a sleepover at her house and it was so exciting because I'd go up and spend a week at a time with my grandparents. They lived about five hours away from my parent, my family. And my aunt lived in the same town. And so one of the nights I was up there, I stayed with her and we watched the Goonies. And so I watched it with the boys and they were pretty captivated. It's so funny though. 1985, 87 when it came out. And of course there's a Cyndi Lauper song that I couldn't not sing along to. And just happy, it just made me so happy. And you know, laughing at Data and all his little inventions. It was good, it was fun. Uh, good rainy day activity for sure. So the next sock, Dottie Cowell sock. <laughs> this, I think I showed it to you last time that it was in progress. Well, it's got a second one going along. So this is a slip stitch pattern on the front. It's a free pattern by Melissa Bernstein. It's for cowl. So grab that stitch pattern, added it to my sock. I was using, I'm gonna put it in a picture. I took it so I could show it to you of what this, this colorway by Fiber Nymph Dye Works. This is the exclusive colorway for the Splash Pad Party. So extra points. Um, this is what it would look like if I were to knit it straight according to pattern. But I had to be difficult and decided to do this slip stitching and do it just on the white part. And so I was going along, going along, going along. And I was doing a lot of yarn management to keep the color sequence right and to have enough white to do the front. And so I added in some As You Wish, which is a Toad Hollow yarn that had a little bit of speckling. And it looks kind of gray and muddy to me. So you could see from about here to there, I was using that for the solid, for some of the solid rows, white rows. And I, I was gonna rip back and I said, no, let it go, let it go. So let it go. So I pulled out some just natural Lion Brand, Red Heart, no, Red Heart, Heart and Soul something. Anyways, whatever their basic sock yarn is white and I switched and I'm much happier with just the solid white and so I use that when I don't have when I'm not at a point in the two balls of I have two balls of these and when I'm at color in both of them I use that for the white make sense yeah so that's the first one and the second one is that far along so just getting into the green and my, I don't want to call it OCD, but my um, desire to match, <laughs> I'm putting in the same white stripes because I was not designing, but I was knitting it on the fly and not sure how I was going to make it work with the slip stitches since it's not a full, I wasn't going to slip stitches all the way around the foot, right? I didn't want to walk on them. So um, I did some rows in white and then I realized, no, no, I need to conserve the white because the white stripes are smaller than the colored stripes in the original, um, in the skein. How, that's how they're dyed. So yeah, so I did a few. So I'm going to make that one match too. And these are so dense and so cushy on the top because, you know, you're um, doing pearls and knits and slips and you're going over each row twice essentially so it makes it a really nice fabric and while I was knitting them I kept trying it on trying it on trying it on to make sure that this part right here didn't get too tight to go over my foot and or up my ankle around the base of my heel there we go so um what else it's that 
did that. I do 32 stitches normally for a sock and I wear a size 11 too, in case you're wondering. <laughs> um, and so through here on the top of the foot, I went up to 36 and then I went up to, I want to say 77, 72, not 77, 72 for the leg or maybe even 76. I think 76 now that I'm saying it out loud. Yeah, because then instead of 32 stitches on a needle, I had 38. So, yeah, there you go. That may be the last sock. Okay, <laughs> we're going to throw in a work in progress. I mean, a finished object. I've got another... I've got another whip to share with you, but I want to keep on the sock theme. So you saw these before, same thing. The Dottie Cowl added to these. This is the first pair that I finished with Sarah's heel, the CPCTC pattern. Links will be below. So there's the first sock. There's the second sock. These were my Desert Vista Dye Works for June. And the color is drive-in? I don't know. Something about the drive-in. Drive-in golf, drive-in movie, theater, something. But of course, it's beautiful. It's teal. How could it not be beautiful? Teal and red, so pretty together. So for some reason, yeah, I guess these are as squishy. I'm just noticing it more with the other one. I think because the other one, I associate those colors with summer brightness. And so it's surprising me that they're heavy and dense, but you would expect, like these are more wintry to my mind, black versus white. Uh, I'd expect these to be a bit warmer. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> the next finished object is one that was a UFO for a very long time. I showed you these. So this was my third Fiber Nymph Dye Works UFO that I wanted to get off the needles and I did it. So if nothing else, I succeeded in finishing off my splash pad party sponsor projects that I cast on during previous parties or pigskin party and did not finish. So I, I finished them this time. So this is simple garter slipper, I'm guessing. And, um, I had one done, but not the top of it, right? It hadn't been seamed shut. So, and I had the start of the second one, right? I'm so making this up. Maybe I didn't, I think I just had the start of the second one and that's not where I was, but I did want to use my Mickey ears. I love that. It makes me think of Fantasia. I want to go to Disney. <laughs> <clears throat> Anyways, um, lost, come back, reel it in. Okay, so these garter slippers, I knit myself a pair. One, the closing on the top is a little tight. I don't wear them as often as I could. And the other one is fine, right? One pair, two feet. So there's that. This yeah, because I did more stripes, obviously, on the second one. And I used opal black yarn for the stripes over here. But then I couldn't find that skein anywhere. And I might have used it up in a hat for Steve. So I just grabbed some of the charcoal yarn. Some variegated, not variegated, tonal, semi-solid. There you go, semi-solid hand-dyed yarn that I had about. And um, I used that for these stripes. And then the pattern calls for you to just seam up and then go around the, the cuff opening. Um, <clears throat> I felt like these were too narrow for my dad's feet. These are for my dad, by the way. And I feel like they're probably too sharp for my dad's feet. We'll see if he finds them comfortable once he tries them on. But because it felt really narrow, I just added a few rows in the middle and then I did my three needle bind off. You know, short rows back and forth, back and forth. And I did it on this one as well, although you can't really tell. And yeah, that's it. These are done. 
be a, seriously like four years waiting to be finished. So I'm really glad to have these off my needles and be able to gift them to him and um, good use of solid yellow yarn because I'm not a huge yellow fan and he is and I bought it for him. So yay, finished object. The last finished object, oh, we're gonna have to jump, <clears throat> is my cowgirl cowl. So this is by Pam Powers. I used two strands of Knit Pick Stroll gradient held together. And it went from dark to light, so I didn't get to the absolute lightest color, as you can see. But it did have a very good transition from where it was to where it ended. I made a tassel. I know. Can you believe it? I've never made a tassel before. So I made one for my gnome and then one for this. Did I showed you the finished gnome. The gnome is finished. Anyways, um, <clears throat> the pattern called for a button, not a button, a bead in between. And goodness knows, I don't know where to find beads. So I tried it without because I didn't have one with a hole at the top and the bottom. All beads have holes at the top and the bottom. I didn't have a, a really pretty decorative one that would go with this. We'll go with <laughs> why I didn't think beads have top holes at the top and the bottom. Anyways, so <clears throat> I found one with Tristan's help. So I need to put one of these in between there because I thought I would be okay, but no, it's stretching from the point of the shawl down to the tassel. So tassel's kind of heavy, but yeah, I love this thing. It is wonderful. So now that you've seen it, I'm taking it off because I'm getting hot. It's like 85 degrees out and there's no air conditioning on in this room. So I went stash diving through buttons to find some buttons. So this cowl is knit flat. Um, that's fine. It's knit flat, which is actually probably easier for doing the zigzags to keep it straight. But the only buttons that I had that were large enough that I had enough of five buttons were these and these are um I followed the the instructions for making little crochet loops for buttonholes buttonholes yes buttonholes yes but they it was pulling they weren't staying shut these buttons were too small for that so I decided that I was just gonna sew it together because I'm never gonna wear it unopened you know um did I sew the, yeah, I even sewed the top one. So they show the, in the pattern picture, it's shown with either the top or the bottom one unbuttoned for like a, a different look, but I don't need that. I'm quite happy with it this way. I wore it to fireworks the night it was finished cause it was cold. So, and I've got my little Nomi stitch marker on there. Do you see him? That's where I, I was, hey down here. And this part was like running downhill. So after I finished, it's like, I I don't see a reason why I couldn't have knit it in the round for the way I finished it and then switch to flat knitting at that point. But that's not what the pattern calls for. And the way I've finished it isn't either. <laughs> but it works for me and I, I love it. It's huge though. I think this was like 600 yards. It's yarn held double, so that makes it a little bigger. All right. I've got to go grab my last whip to share with you. And while I do that, why don't I give you a little shop update? I will tell you that these two bags behind me, they are one of a kind, and I'm not going to include them in the update because once they sell, they sell. So, um, yeah, this one is super cute. Can you see there's a castle and then on the other side there's an arrow showing you how to get to the castle and on the inside I have little coordinating tents so the same as the handle so we really like this one it's um what size is this it's an in-between size because it's not as big as an Everest but it's uh pretty big and then this one has 
the little guys and then them sleeping in tents and that's the same tent that's on the inside so there are those there okay rest of the shop update now Welcome to the summer update for the Adornet Shop. Thanks for checking us out. We are so excited to share our new bags with you. So this is an exclusive jellyfish fabric that you'll only find at our shop. We are so excited with those giant bags. And then this we're calling the Mame bag. This bag is giant. It is even bigger than our Everest size bag. It will carry everything and the kitchen sink. Um, it has a removable bottom, like a hard wooden bottom. It's just awesome. Next up in the equator size bag, we have these great spirals in these beautiful pastel colors with purple or coral linings. Look at the zipper pull. I couldn't have matched that any better if I tried super, super hard. You see, it's a spiral. <laughs> these um, one of a kind tulip and raindrop bags. And then we're calling these the summer sidewalks. Uh, we're sold out on two of them, but the one with the pink bottom is still available if you'd like. And you know, we have cat shaped markers. Well, we've added bronze. And not only is it available in bronze, but now it's available in three sizes. What? So you could get medium, large, or our new extra large size in these. We have Snoopy. We love Snoopy. But we also have some Woodstock. So we added him in. And then Super Mario Brothers. This is the Fire Flower set. Um, a Mickey. You know, we are Disney people. So we included one of those. Well-behaved women rarely make history. We've added that one in. And then look at this adorable llama riding a bicycle. We did two different options of this with colored rings or really colorful beads. Ice cream, you scream. We all scream for ice cream. <laughs> and sunflowers. This one just makes me smile for some reason. And keeping on with that bronze theme, we've got flip flops and a little marker that says play on the back of it. And last but not least, keeping on the bronze theme, we've added Hermione's wand in bronze rather than the traditional antique silver. So this is perfect for holding your shawls together. Thanks for watching. Have a great week. Um, you may or may not have noticed my shirt. It um, is from Juggling the Jenkins. Tiffany, she is a recovering alcoholic. Anyways, um, she's hilarious. She has turned a very dark chapter of her life into something extremely inspirational. And she posts hilarious videos. She is not afraid to make a fool of herself. And yeah, so she was making these t-shirts. And so I got this one and another one just to support her because she makes me laugh. Every time I see something she's done, every new piece I see. So that's Juggling the Jenkins. I'll link her Instagram below. So back to it. Um, work in progress. So you haven't seen this in a, in a bit, but remember when I was on my Pam Powers cowl kick. So her cowls are $7.00 each I looked this morning and if you buy two you get one free so I bought three of her patterns <laughs> so the cow girl cowl that I the finished object you just saw was one of them and then the chala scarf infinity scarf is another one I know it's beautiful in these light colors why didn't I do light colors well I was afraid makeup just would rub off and I'm not that coordinated or careful. So coffee dribbles, I don't know, something. So I did not pick light colors, even though this is beautiful. And that wasn't even the pattern I went there to buy. Neither of them were. The one I went to buy is the one I didn't knit. Oh well. Uh, so let's talk about colors first. So Dr. Zhivago Sky in Mad Tosh. I do have a sweater out of that. Love. That's probably my favorite gray. It's definitely a blue gray. Um, this one is Reynolds Review. I told you about that. It's discontinued. I'm sorry, but it's a super uh, highly plied like eight ply DK weight yarn. 
And then for my main color that actually I picked this one first and made the others go with it, it is Mountain Colors Crazy Feet Well Marinated Stash, probably 15 years old. Um, it has mohair content, mohair instead of nylon in it. And at the time I knit one pair in this yarn. I can picture it, it's a green pair. I don't know where they are. And I, I didn't enjoy wearing them compared to wearing um, an opal or a super soft merino with nylon. So this has just been sitting and waiting and it was, it's time to shine. So I did something that I think is rather ingenious. I put it in this project bag because back up, I'm holding two skeins double. And in this project, you're knitting with three colors at the same time. It's at least the way I'm knitting it. And so I just had four strands and everywhere and all mixed up all the time. So it was easier for me to put them in a sack together and keep them together. So yeah, I have to have a bigger project bag than I need to carry it around because of that sack, but I'm fine with that. It's my summery butterflies. <sighs> Don't you love a good canvas? Like we make them and they're super stiff and like most of our bags with the interfacing are stiff. That's how we like them, right? But then a canvas, the more you use it, the softer it gets. And I didn't really realize that it was changing until I washed one of mine. I got coffee on it. Of course I did. And it came out and I was like, whoa, it's crunchy again. Like it went back, but now this guy's nice and soft. So I love it. Um, okay. I'm, I'll stop teasing. Let's get to the project. Shall we? It's hard to show. Like I'm, I'm not really sure because it rolls up on itself, but I'm sure a little blocking will help. So it's called the Chala infinity scarf. Chala is a braided bread. And so this is sort of a braided mini scarf pattern. So three different textures is fully reversible. And I have finished three of six sections. So it's going to look awesome wrapped up around twice, just like all the, all the colors everywhere. There, there's a mini representation of what it will look like on me. I am using, I want to say size eights for this. These are pretty big needles and yeah, it's, totally like, oh, let me get to the next section. Let me get to the next section. When I was knitting it, I haven't been knitting it much lately. So um, yeah, I put about two inches on it since I pulled it back out. And the pattern calls for you to knit each of the three sections separately. I said, ah, I'll do them all on one needle at the same time. But one of them turns out um, like the, the, row gauge is slightly different. So one of them I have to do a couple, four, six extra rows on to have it end up the same length as the other two. Fine. I don't mind doing that. <laughs> and going across, I'm not a big fan of low stitch counts. Just you're constantly turning because I haven't figured out how to purl back. I totally should though. Anyways, so there it is. Next week, I look forward to showing you this as a finished object. So not next week, cause I don't record every week, but you know what I mean. The other thing I cast on this week, uh, my friend Steph Farmstead Knitting, I think is the name of her revel, revel. She and Emily host the, I'm gonna get it. Give me a second, give me a second. Between Knits and Pearls podcast, yep. And, um, so Steph cast on for the Jelly World Blanket by K Bakery Bears. K? K? Oh my gosh. I can't do this off the top of my head. Anyways, um, you've see, I'm seeing these little blankets all over the place. So I cast on one and I've got about three colors into it. So it's not much to show, but that will be coming. It's kind of... Um, I have anti-motivation for knitting that, right? Like, I love the look of it. I really wanted it. Every day, Steph was posting pictures, not me, her, and I, I want it, I want it, I want it. And so I cast on, but I want to be finishing things for the splash pad party. So I don't know how I'm going to make this work. Um, I was trying to do 
one section a day and my sections are coming out to be about 10 inches of a color. 10 inches, even on a small stitch count, takes a while. And some days I'm only getting like an hour of knitting in the evening before I get sleepy. Yeah, this week has been rough. Can I please tell you that I have gotten up between 2 and 3 a.m. for the last like six days. It's crazy and I can't get back to sleep. And it's not like I'm stressed. It's not like anything big is going on in our lives that you know, my brain is running. I'm just awake. Oh, why is my nose super itchy? I'm sorry. Let me just, there. Okay. Nope. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I've been getting up super early, uh, which means at 7.30, 8 o'clock, I am falling asleep on the couch. So that's not ideal. So last night after a day at the water park, which was so fun, oh, we were there with one of the boys friends and his mom who's my friend and I haven't seen her since the pandemic started and it was just joyous to be together so fun um yeah and we went on all the rides with the boys and yeah we're like, two big kids together so it's fun and we think a lot alike so anyways um after doing that all day out in the sun I don't think I got sunburned I know Roland did, but I was trying really hard to keep the sunscreen on the face, at least. Um, I was exhausted. Yeah, so falling asleep. So then I took a sleeping pill. So then I slept through the night. So hopefully tonight my body will be reset. I can stay up to 9.30, 10 o'clock, a normal time for me, and then go to bed and get a full night's sleep. <laughs> yeah. So the boys are at soccer camp right now. That has been alternatingly super fun and not super fun. Um, we had three days of rain. They're only there in the mornings. And I thought for sure I needed to go pick them up about halfway through when it was down pouring in the rain. And they had tents like those, those pop-up things that are just the top awning and then poles. They had those set up for each of the, I think, four or five age groups that they broke the kids out into, but they weren't going to spend the whole prep, the whole camp under that. So Steve talked me out of it. No, he sent me the Beatles. Let it be. <laughs> it was like, Stephanie, don't go get them. So I didn't. And then when I picked them up, the most giant smiles you've ever seen. Those kids had a blast playing soccer in the rain. I guess it's different than fall soccer. When it's summer soccer in the rain, it's hot and you're warm enough and the rain just feels nice and adds a fun element. So they were both talking about slipping and sliding and yeah, they had a great time. So that has been a great experience for them. And I wasn't sure because we usually use one company for all of our camps and, and um, extracurricular soccer activities that aren't through the rec program. We do the rec and then we do these guys. Seacoast United is what they're called. This camp was put on by the UNH University of New Hampshire men's soccer coaches. And so I was like, I don't know how they'll do, but it's been great. And they've learned a lot of different skills. So that's exciting to see them doing different things, you know, different. I'm a firm believer. The more coaches you can have, the more things you can learn. So Roland's already signed up for fall travel soccer. I have to check. I haven't seen Tristan's age group come through in an email that it's time to sign him up, but I think Roland's was early because of the uniforms. So got him his uniform. It's number 24. <laughs> We're ready to go. Yeah. So planning to go back to the water camp, water camp, water country to the water park that we went to, uh, next week, the week after whatever, we went to a birthday party last weekend. It was indoor at an arcade, but then parts of it, they have go-karts. So we were outside for that and what was laser tag. So those were like the three activities for this birthday party, which was four hours long. The mom who hosted, you know, it's her son's birthday, had no idea that we were getting four hours of time. She, you know, we all thought, oh, a two hour birthday party. So, uh, it, we did not stay for four hours. That was my first 
like, okay, let's go be social in a crowd. So Tris wore his mask. I didn't. Um, we were definitely in the minority wearing a mask. When he was outside, we took it off. Uh, and, and when he was eating, he took it off. Arcades are loud. And that was a lot of socializing for my introverted self to just make small talk with all of these parents because <laughs> we all stayed because seven I can't leave a seven-year-old I, I went back and forth I was like can I drop and go but no he's too young still he's not he's not Roland um just different and I don't know these parents as well as I know Roland's parents friends obviously so um but it was good because we found out that three two of his friends also have uh, season passes to the water park. So we're going to make a trip with one of those moms that I'm getting to know pretty well. So yay, life, it's happening. It's unrolling. It's going back to normal for us. I know, I know. I'm ignoring the news about the variant. <laughs> Maybe putting my head in the sand. I hope not. I hope we're all okay. And let's get as much as we can done outside while we can. And if everything locks down again for the fall, so be it. But for now, I want to try and have as much normal fun as we can because it feels really good to see people and be with people. Yeah. So I think that's all I have. Anything else exciting? Zim keeps escaping. Our little Zimmy, 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 Zimmy. He's sleeping over there. He's not looking at me. Yeah. I have to get him microchipped. It's, it's too dangerous. And like last time I was going out, it was me that let him out. I'm like the most careful. I yell at him and kick at him and he still got out. And he ran around the flower beds to the side of the, the side lawn of the house. It was just crouched, just in the grass. And it gave me enough time to walk over slowly, bend over and get him. So I don't know if he's like, I wanna go out there, but then he's uncomfortable once he's out there. I'm just glad there were no squirrels because he could have taken off. Funny story. <laughs> Our neighbors moved, right? You know, we have all these older retired men around us and like when Norm mowed, Bob mowed, and then I would mow because they were mowing and then Lenny's down there. Anyways, all these older guys and um, Bob left. Bob was such a sweetheart. He's still a sweetheart. He just doesn't live next door anymore. But um, so our new neighbors didn't know that the uh, decorative trees in between our two houses, we have like, it's not a hedge, but there were like four trees, oh, two lilacs and then two, I don't know what they are. They didn't know they were theirs. And so Steve mowed around them while they were, the new neighbors were waiting for their lawnmower to come. And then they just assumed that they were our trees. <laughs> So, okay, these are our trees now. So I use the riding lawnmower and that's in my zone of the yard. <laughs> Steve has the push and there are places he pushes out in the back where it's hilly and weed wax. I don't do those two things. I just do my rider. Well, I went out there and I trimmed those two big unknown, he, he knows what they are. I don't know what they are. I trimmed them down as my dad told me to make them tall, right? Cause they're very tall trees and I would say the the leaves are like from that portion of it and then it's just a lot of sticks and the leaves are heavy and they fall so I trimmed some of them so that it would be less but apparently I trimmed too many on the outside so what I thought looked good after a big rainstorm one side one of them had still more branches coming down but I didn't see that when I was mowing at full speed speed for me probably mid speed for most people and I got my headset on and my sunglasses so my and it's a big headset right I'm full and I'm be bopping along because I like to sing while I lawn mow and I go to go through that spot in the two trees and it's pulling me back like they had intermeshed themselves that one that fell it fell onto the other one and because it's just a lawnmower with a part. And so I'm going, I'm going, and I feel myself getting pulled. Like my head is stuck in the book, in the foliage. My body is getting pulled and it occurs to me, I'm gonna fall off this darn lawnmower. <laughs> I gotta hold on. So I grab on tight to the wheel 
right? Because I'm not going to fall. So then I, I get through, I look through my glasses, my head, my, I'm a mess. Everything is like this. Well, of course, that happened to be the day that Bob and Cecile are visiting Norm across the street. And so everybody saw me do this. <laughs> I felt really stupid, <laughs> but it's okay. Cause Bob would just laugh at me at least once a month. I'd do something and make him laugh. So <sighs> anyways, I am lawnmowerly challenged or maybe I'm tree trimming challenged cause I'm good with the lawnmower. Let me tell you, I am good. I can do a lot of hills with it and the leaning and the going fat. Anyways. I love my lawnmower. <laughs> it got new blades, so it's even it's even better than it ever was. So that's enough on that. Oh, and on top of that, let me just tell you one more thing. They all saw, and Norm gave me the lawnmower <laughs> because our lawn is big and their lawns are both big. And they were like, you can't. They felt bad for Steve with a push. And so they gave us one of theirs. I think it was his mother-in-law's. Anyways, whatever. They, something happened. They had an extra lawnmower, so they gave it to us. And that's kind of why I felt like I always needed to mow on the same timetable as him because he's across the street. He's looking at my yard. I'm looking at his yard. He wants me to do a good job with my lawnmower. And he's Mr. John Deere, an aerator, and there are absolutely no weeds on his lawn. I'm going on a tangent. I'm sorry. I'm a little jealous of how beautiful his lawn is. So I try really hard on mine. So me getting like all disheveled going through the bushes on the lawnmower he gave me. I'm sh oh. <laughs> oh goodness me. All right. I'm going to leave it there. I hope you have a great 10 days or so. I haven't said that in a long time till I talk to you again. Happy knitting. Take care. <laughs>